I will probably apologize a few times for this, but some episodes cannot be made into a tiny TikTok. They just can't. When looking for a new home, we typically search for a few bedrooms, a few bathrooms, a decent sized kitchen, a back garden fit for a barbecue and a good location. However, can I interest you in, no I'm kidding, it's not for sale, a 161 room mansion consisting of 40 bedrooms, 13 bathrooms, six kitchens, 10,000 panes of glass, 2,000 doors, 47 fireplaces, four of which are located in a room aptly named the Hall of Hell, 40 plus staircases, 17 chimneys, three elevators, two ballrooms, trapdoors, secret passageways, and a skylight on the floor. This unique 24,000 square foot home was the brainchild of Sarah Winchester. Sarah Lockwood Pardee was born September 5th, 1839. She grew up in New Haven, Connecticut with both her parents, her four sisters, and her brother. From an early age, Age, Sarah found socializing and connecting with other children her age very challenging. Instead, she developed a passion for architecture while watching the craftsmen in her father's mill. At 23, all of her sisters were married, so her parents introduced her to the son of a family friend. William. There were sparks. However, their happiness was short-lived as they were struck by a series of unfortunate events, including the Civil War, family illnesses, and tragic losses. In 1865, amid the grief, Sarah found out she was pregnant. She gave birth in June of 1866 to her daughter Annie, but despite their hopes for their future, again tragedy hit, and little Annie passed away. She was six weeks old when she died, and her death brought immense sorrow, compounded by the common belief at the time that unbaptized babies were condemned to eternal damnation, leading them to decide that Annie would be their only child. In 1873, William's father, Oliver, acquired a struggling revolver company and launched the Winchester Rifle Model 73, increasing the family's wealth. Tragically, Sarah experienced more loss and grief following the deaths of her mother, her father-in-law, and devastatingly, her husband William due to tuberculosis. She inherited approximately $20 million, equivalent to about $563 million today, and 50% to the Winchester Arms Company, providing her with a substantial daily income. Following the passing of her husband and her daughter, Sarah sought the guidance of a medium in Boston. Through the medium, she seemingly communicated with her late husband, who mentioned that their family's misfortune were tied to the wealth amassed by the Winchester Rifles. In 1886, Sarah reached out to the San Francisco agent for the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, Ned Rambo, in search of a new place to settle. Ned proposed a ranch for sale in the Santa Clara Valley. The property reminded her of La Nada Alves, a picturesque valley in Spain that she and her late husband had visited. She bought an eight-roomed farmhouse and named it La Nada Villa. Despite being small, the 45-acre property allowed for expansion. That's Sarah's impression, not mine, I think eight rooms is huge. Over eight months, she transformed it into a 26-room home. Now are you seeing why she thought it was small? She convinced her sisters to move out to California and help them acquire their own homes. But her niece Daisy was the only one that was allowed to come and live with her. She had an ever-changing vision for her house and did all the planning herself. She sketched out the additions on tablecloth, bits of paper, and whatever was handy. Consequently, there was no master plan or blueprints for the house. The home contained many oddities, like a stairs to nowhere and a door with a 12 foot drop. She added a third and a fourth floor and by the end of the century the home had a tower that reached seven stories. Psychologists theorize that the house's odd layout contributes to the feeling that it was and perhaps still is haunted. You see before moving out west Sarah consulted a psychic who advised her to continuously build and change the house to keep the spirits at bay. She built a seance room seemingly to contact good spirits as they advised her on how to create a confusing layout for any malevolent spirits. The seance room had one entrance and three exits. Over the years, Sarah diligently worked on building and renovating her home, constantly striving to achieve her vision. She spared no expense, adorning her Queen Anne Victorian style residence with gold and silver chandeliers, hand laid parquet flooring. The villa boasted indoor plumbing with hot running water, forced air heating throughout the whole house, and push button gas lighting. Special easy rider staircases were fitted to replace the original steep ones as Sarah's arthritis progressed. Another unique addition was a custom built shower to accommodate. Sarah's difficulties climbing in and out of the tub. Same girl, same. Despite the luxurious features, Sarah never invited anyone to her home. Not even President gun-loving Theodore Roosevelt himself, who was met with locked gates when he tried to visit. But I mean, did he ring ahead? Like, because that would irk me too. Sarah firmly believed that continuing to work on her house was essential to avoid the same fate that befell her family. So she persevered in her building efforts. 
units, the only individuals with regular access to the home were the employees who maintained a steadfast presence. Despite numerous inquiries from the locals about the house, the staff remained tight-lipped and loyal. Sarah consistently incentivized hard work from her staff by offering salaries 30 to 50 times higher than the industry standard, alongside covering room and board. Over nearly 40 years, Sarah Winchester was busy building her mysterious mansion that stands to this day. After Sarah passed away in September 5th, 1922, her niece inherited $3,000, personal possessions, and an income from a trust fund. It pays to be Auntie Sarah's favourite. The house, however, was difficult to sell due to local apprehension, but it was eventually leased by a local aristocrat who planned to build a backity-back historical wooden roller coaster. However, due to local restrictions and public interest in the house. The focus shifted to opening the house to the public. The roller coaster project was abandoned. The home's true meaning may be hidden in the ballroom, the Shakespearean windows and the island gates. Some believe that Sarah was a member of a mystic society like the Rosicrucians, Freemasons or both. In October 1924, magician Harry Houdini visited the Winchester estate to debunk the legends, but left with more questions than answers. The Winchester mystery house's third floor corridors were often avoided due to reports of footsteps and unfamiliar voices but no living people were seen. Visitors reported sightings of figures and unknown presences. The commonly reported apparition is a man with jet black hair often seen pushing a wheelbarrow or repairing the fireplace giving the impression of a former handyman. The Winchester mystery house may not have been haunted but Sarah Winchester herself was believed to be. The home's expansion was intended to provide peace for the spirits that haunted her. Aside from being a woman with wealth in the 18 and 1900s Sarah was ahead of her time. Her love for architecture was believed to be a way to cope with the grief of losing her only child and the man she adored. So if you ever wonder what the mind of a broken-hearted woman looks like, take a walk through the halls of the Winchester Mystery House.